Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Pastor Gary Bightley from Fredericton Word of Faith Family Church, and uh, we're here uh, just doing some little special recordings. Uh, it's called, uh, Do You Have Time for a Story? And uh, Jesus was a master storyteller. In fact, we're told in uh, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and also in Mark, it says, but in Matthew uh, uh, 13, 34, and all these things, spoke Jesus unto the multitudes in parables, and without a parable, uh, which is a story, of course, he did not speak unto them, that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. And so Jesus would, he would uh, share, he never spoke without sharing some uh, stories that uh, the people could uh, wrap themselves into. Everybody loves a good story. But the stories that Jesus told always had a deep spiritual uh, meaning to them. There was the surface story, but then there was the deeper story that was on the inside. So Jesus was able to communicate deep spiritual truths to the people that had an ear to hear. And so it says over in uh, the Gospel of Luke, uh, uh, this is the story where uh, Peter uh, is told that he is going to betray Jesus. And of course Peter is vehemently denies these things and he's saying no, no, no. But anyway, this is what Jesus said in verse 31 of uh, Luke 22, verse 31. And Jesus said, uh, Unto Simon, he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith fail not, when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. And he, Peter, that is, said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell you, Peter, the cock shall not crow the cock shall not crow this day before that thou hast denied me three times. And so we see something uh, about Peter. Peter is, he says, I'm willing to go with you. I'm willing to stand with you. Uh, in fact, I'm willing to go to prison for you. I'm willing to die for you. Uh, something that uh, uh, my wife had said one time is, is that you never know what's in a person until they get squeezed. Kind of like toothpaste. I don't know about you, but you know, toothpaste is in a tube, and, and until you squeeze the tube, you really don't know what's on the inside of that. And so we're all kind of that way. We're people that, uh, 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 until you, you, you find yourself in a situation or, or uh, a life's problems, we don't always know how we're going to react. We, we know how we think we're going to react, but when the pressure is on, uh, sometimes we don't always react in such a way. So when, when it came time and Jesus was captured and, and they arrested him, uh, Peter followed at a distance. And sure enough, uh, when he was confronted about Jesus, he, they said to him, you're one of his followers. And he denied him, denied him three times. And then the, the, the rooster crowed. And he remembered what Jesus had just prophesied to him hours before. It says he wept bitter tears, but he denied the Lord. He said, I do not know him. And then he cursed and he swore vehemently and said, I do not know this man. And so we see that under the pressure that uh, uh, Peter, uh, when he was squeezed, what he thought was going to come out wasn't what came out. But God has a way of, of changing us uh, after uh, Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, Peter, uh, remember Jesus said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Jesus knew that Peter would change. And so uh, when you get over into the book of Acts, uh, we find that uh, uh, Peter has been preaching and uh, crippled people are walking. People are coming into the kingdom of God. And so uh, in chapter uh, 4, Peter is arrested. And uh, he is brought in before the high priest and the council, and uh, and they said, uh, uh, you know, he's a, he's in trouble. He's in real trouble, and now everything depends on what he's going to say, whether he's going to live or whether he's going to die. 
as it says in verse chapter 4, verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers uh, of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to that impotent man which was done by what means he is made whole, be it made known unto you and to all the people of Israel by that name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and God raised from the dead, even does this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which the which was set up not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given under heaven wherein men might be saved. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So we see that... Uh, there's been a, a tremendous transformation of, of Peter from going from uh, when he was confronted and getting squeezed, uh, that, that he had a hard experience. He received Jesus after Jesus rose from the dead. That Peter became uh, a, a Christian and became born again. He, was, he and the apostles were the first ones. And so, uh, do you have time for a story? Because uh, I was thinking about this uh, today. Uh, many years ago, uh, it would have been about 1974, 1975, something like that. I was living in Michigan. My parents had a hunting and fishing resort, which I, I lived there and I worked there. I worked for my dad. And I was an avid hunter and fisher, fisher person. I loved hunting. I loved fishing. Uh, I ate it, drank it, lived it. Uh, uh, in my bathroom, I had a stack of hunting and fishing magazines stacked right there by the toilet so it's good reading material. And so uh, I, I love these things very much. And so uh, one day I said to my son Steve, who was about uh, uh, five years old, I said, would, would you like to go hunting with me today? Because I wanted to check out a spot where my dad had shot a big buck the year before. And I thought, well, let's go back. It's fall. It's uh, hunting season. It's uh, partridge season. It's duck season. It's goose season. And uh, let's go back and, and we'll just check this area out and see if there's uh, any deer sign there. And so, uh, of course, he wanted to go with me. What, what son wouldn't want to go with his dad to go hunting? And so I had a 12-gauge shotgun with me. I had my hunting vest on. And uh, uh, when you're shooting, hunting for partridge, uh, we would use uh, something called birdshot, which is like a number seven or eight uh, size pellet. But I also had in my pocket buckshot, which in case we saw some geese someplace, uh, buckshot is uh, much more effective at, uh, at uh, shooting at the geese. And so we, we go back, we get back into the, into the forest, we're back in quite a ways, we've walked in, and the ferns are growing up, uh, and they're up about almost waist high, and so we're getting back into just about the area that my dad had shot the, the buck, we hadn't seen any partridge, and hadn't really seen any deer or anything, when I could hear something walking towards us, so I told my son Steve, I said, let's crouch down, down in, in the ferns, I said, I think there's a big deer coming towards us. And so we crouched down, and I went, shh, not be quiet. We, we don't want to, we don't want to scare it. And so the the footsteps kept getting closer and closer and closer. And so, in fact, they got quite close to us. And suddenly, my son said, "Daddy, what is it?" With this loud voice. And so uh, I, I knew the game was up then. So I stood up with my son, and when I stood up, I was faced with a mother bear, and uh, she was only maybe thirty, forty feet from me. And uh, this mother bear, she had uh, two small cubs with her, and she had a yearling cub with her also. And she stood up on her hind feet. I stood up, and we're looking at each other. I've got my baby with me. She's got her babies with me. And if you know anything about bears, one of the most dangerous times of your life is if you're, if you're faced with a mother bear and her cubs. And so, but I have a shotgun. I have it in my hand. And but it, but on the in, in the in the chamber I have bird shot because I'm I'm looking for partridge. We're not going to find any geese and ducks if we're back in the woods. But in my pocket I've got I've got buck shot. And so I'm trying to figure out: Do I have time to eject the three shells that I have uh, in my gun? 
and reach in my pocket and do I have time to get those three buckshot in there? Because I, if I have buckshot, I'm pretty confident that at very close range, I would be able to, to stop the bear if it charges me. And so uh, I'm, all these things are going through my mind. I'm, I'm looking at this as just like rapid fire. The, these thoughts are coming. And I came to the conclusion I would not have time because a bear can move at 30, 35 miles an hour when, it's, when it puts its mind to it. And it only has 30 some feet between me, 30, 40 feet at the most. So I didn't have time to change the shells. And so I, I, I'm, I'm reaching over. I'm trying to get my son to climb up a tree. I got my gun. I'm pushing him up a tree. And the mother bear, she's slapping those cubs in the rear end and she's sending them up the tree. So we're, we're protecting our babies as best we can. And I'm telling Steve, get up the tree, get up the tree. And he's got this little skinny tree trying to climb. Of course, bear, big bears can't, can't climb skinny trees. Little bears can, but not big bears. And so I figured that, that the only hope I would have if she charged me was I would have to let her get within five feet of me before I would take my first shot from my hip I would have to shoot her in the head. I figured with bird shot at five feet, I might be able to roll her over. I would quickly get two more shots into her. That might stun her. Then I might have time to get in my pocket and get three more of the buckshot in and then, and then finish her off. And that was the plan. Uh, I was, uh, but, but thanks be unto God <laughs> for miracles. I would believe in miracles. The mother bear turned and she, she ran the other, other way. I grabbed my son, I went the other way. It wasn't until I got back to the truck that I was, I was really beginning to shake and I said, now, whatever you do, Steve, don't tell your mother about the bears. She won't ever let us go hunting again. Of course, the first thing he tells his mom when he gets home, Mom, guess what, we saw a bear. But uh, what, what surprised me was when I was confronted with the bear how, how calm I was on the inside. I was thinking rational. I wasn't panicking. Uh, there was something rose up. I had to take care of my son. I had to protect him. She was doing the same thing. She, had to, she wanted to protect her babies. See, you don't know what's on the inside of you until suddenly you're faced with something. But then you, you can find out, hey, there's something, something good on the inside. When you got Jesus on the inside of you, living on the inside of you, you, you've got all of heaven behind you. Everything is there to back you up. And the Bible says that, that uh, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And so I just encourage you today, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you can pray. You can ask him to come in. You'll find, like Peter, maybe you, you, you don't know what's on the inside of you, but boy, when you get Jesus on the inside of you, you know what you've got. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. You can go through any, any hardship, any difficulty, because you've got the greater one on the inside of you. Well, thank you so much for listening. The Lord is good. Let me pray with you today before we go. Father, I thank you for those that are watching today. I ask you to bless them. Make yourself real to them, Father God. Help them to know that there's so the greater one is on the inside. And when things go wrong and they get into difficult situations, maybe even into dangerous situations, Father, we pray that when they get squeezed, that something good, the Holy Ghost is going to come out. The Word of God is going to come out. The power of God is going to come out. And Father, we thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you. you guys have a great day. <laughs>